to the Prophecy Club. We're going to continue talking with Michael Root. My good friend Michael Root is the founder and president of A Root Awakening International. It's a ministry focused on restoring the Hebrew roots of the Christian faith while exposing the perversions of both Judaism and pagan abominations found in the American church today. Lived in Israel for 20 years, produced TV series called Prepare for a Root Awakening from Israel, been translated into many different languages. Television ministry A Root Awakening is broadcast in more than 127 countries in both English and in Spanish. So, Michael Rood, welcome back to The Prophecy Club. Thank you. Thank you so much, Stan. It is just a joy, a, a privilege to be back with you again after all these years. I have to say, Stan, I think I, I said in our last broadcast that uh, that when I came on the Prophecy Club, I was on zero stations right. around the world. I was uh, I was preaching my heart out and, and traveling all over the United States and, and uh, parts of the world. But but uh, you came to me and said that if you want to get your message out to the world, come on the Prophecy Club. I did. And Stan, I have to say that everything that you ever told me, everything you promised to me, and every dream, with the, and you and your wife would have prophetic dreams about me, every one of them was absolutely wow. dead on, and I'm still living it today. Well, praise the Lord. Uh, you know, I think that's the reason, you know, the Bible says that we get to see everything done in secret, we made open and manifest. So I assume we get to see a replay of these 6,000 years. And when we do, I think that's the reason we fall on our face and cast our crowns at his feet, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive praise and glory and honor and power and majesty and thanksgiving, because you did it all. We didn't do anything. So all power and glory that Michael and I, and I are talking about all goes to the Holy Father, Holy Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen? Well, I'm glad you said that, because when you started saying about replaying this whole thing, I just started cringing and thinking, oh, no, does he have to replay anything I've done? <laughs> <laughs> You're a good brother. <laughs> because if, if he does, then it is really. I mean, you know, all power and glory, because, man, we are, we are you know, I was an idiot. Most of the time, yeah, that's and, right. Uh, and uh, the only time I did anything right is when he was leading me by his spirit. So you know, most, uh, and I'll tell you a little story. I can't believe I'm telling this on the radio, but I'm about to tell him myself a little bit. Most of us men are an an accident or a mistake looking for the next place to happen. One evening, I came home, uh, had stopped by the grocery store, and I came in with a little pot, a little flower. It had an orchid in it. And I handed it to Leslie, my wife. Oh, what's this for? And I said, oh, honey, just because I love you. And it sat there for a day or so. Now, I knew that Leslie does not like her bath water filled quickly. She likes her bath water to be filled slowly. I know. You're, I see you frowning. You're saying why? Well, it's the same thing. Like, uh, why? Uh, why? Why do that? You know, why not? <laughs> I mean, fill that rascal up, okay? So I walked over, and I turned both of the knobs. <laughs> I'm feeling that. And man, I, she says, you know, I don't like it filled quickly. Oh, 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 OK, OK. So I ran out of the bathroom. So I ran in there and I got my orchid plant that I'd given her a couple of days before and I stuck it in the door. So the only thing she could see was my hand and that orchid. And I just sat there for a minute directly. I heard you're forgiven. <laughs> so now here's the end of the story. So about a week, maybe two weeks later, I stopped by, and this time I brought her uh, a dozen long stem red roses. And I walked in, and I handed it to him. She says, "What's that for?" And I said, "I don't know yet, but I'm sure something's coming." <laughs> right? Right? Is that true? Is that right? <laughs> I'm, I sh I'm sure I will need them. It's just a matter of time. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's, it's, life is great. Well, I, I'm, I'm glad that uh, you stuck that orchid when you said you walked in the house with, with, with a pot, with pot in your hand. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <it's>, uh, <laughs> in other words, it wasn't a cut flower. It was a growing alive flower. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, so, yeah. so we met back in uh, about May of 2000, put you on uh, about a 40 city speaking tour you made a DVD, well, but then you yeah, came back. Right? It was forty-two, Stan. It was forty-two. Forty-two cities, huh? Yeah, yeah I lived through it. <laughs> yep. You could see yep. it from afar, but forty-two cities. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, and that blew life into the vision, and you've continued to run with it. Okay, so now you have rewritten. How do I say this? I, that might not be the right word. 
the chronological gospels where you have taken Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and you have put them in the chronological order, which I understand is not spread over three and a half years, but you're going to say that is actually only one 70 week period. Tell us about that. Uh, well, this, this is actually the subtitle of the book. Uh, it is, uh, first of all, the Chronological Gospels, The Life and 70-Week Ministry of the Messiah. Now, first of all, what I've done is I've taken every one of the more than 300 incidents in the life and ministry of Yeshua and put them in exact chronological order, which took me over 40 years to solve all the problems, uh, and um, it, which, which takes astronomy, it takes historical records from Rome, it really takes a lot to make sure there are no fatal errors in any, any computation that is made. And that's the first thing that, that we attempt to do, or I attempt to do, is to disprove a particular point. Because if I can find the documentation to disprove one single thing, then we have to start over. And, but that makes sure that it's airtight, that, 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 it's, that there's nothing missing on this. And so I have taken uh, these individual incidents and I have compiled everything that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John have written about that incident and isolated them to that event so that you can see every bit of their perspective there. And if there are any apparent contradictions, they are going to show up right there as well. And so once that is done, then when one reads the chronological gospels, they they can know everything that can be known about that particular incident right there in front of them. And uh, and uh, I have literally read the gospel records through hundreds and hundreds of times. And I don't mean by reading a couple of verses. I mean I start with Matthew one one, and I go through the second chapter of the book of Acts without stopping. Because I have to put all that information in my, my random access memory in order to be able to draw on it and put it together. So this was not a simple thing. And there was a problem that I had for 20 years in, this, uh, in the course of this that I just could not get past this. And, and neither can anyone else. Every chronology of the Gospels that's ever been done, Stan, has been wrong. And I can show you where it's wrong, and I don't even have to know the language. I can go to it, and I can show you where it's wrong, because they made the same assumptions that were dead wrong that keeps anyone from being able to do this. Now, the first thing where we come into the life and summoning week ministry of the Messiah, uh, this shocks a lot of people, Stan. It, it actually uh, shocked me. Because I was raised in a world where I was raised with the three and a half year ministry of right, Jesus. Right. That's what everybody is told. The entire Christian world was raised with that because we inherited it from Rome. But what is not known is that for more than 300 years, there was one, not one dissenting opinion among the disciples, the gospel authors, the disciples of the disciples, the early church fathers, not one dissenting opinion for 300 years. They all said or never disputed Jesus' ministry was about one year. Then, in the fourth century, one man, the court bishop of Constantine, who helped him put together the Nicene Council, Eusebius came up with a harebrained idea and he said, Jesus' ministry is three and a half years, which is one half of a week. He was just guessing. Well, what he was doing is attempting to decipher the messianic prophecy right. in the ninth chapter of Daniel, the 70-week right. prophecy. Right. And so, for the first time in history, someone utters that, though, that phrase that his ministry is three and a half years, the first time, and he denies 300 years of testimony. And completely out of the blue, because he's attempting to solve Daniel's messianic prophecy. But listen to this, Stan. This is why he did it. He writes this, and I cover this in the introduction. This is paramount. When people get the chronological gospels, they must read the introduction. That is the thesis. That's where I lay this thing out, because without that thesis, you will not understand the gospels. You'll be like everyone else, just randomly reading a couple of verses out of it. But what happened is that I quoted out of the oration and exaltation of the emperor Constantine. 
This is what Eusebius did, the oration in exaltation of the Emperor Constantine, where he says that all prophecy has already been fulfilled. Now, Constantine is the vicar of Christ who now sits on his millennial throne. And to do that, he had to have all of Daniel's prophecy completely fulfilled. And that's why he pulled that stunt. Three and a half year ministry, then he took three and a half years, a fictional three and a half years out of the book of Acts to get everything fulfilled so that, so that Constantine could be Christ on earth, almighty God upon the earth. And this is what the Protestant religions have inherited because uh, we, honestly, we're all Catholics. We may be protesting Catholics, but that's what we started. We were, you know, we are the product of the Roman church because, because the Pope murdered millions of people to, to take out any dissension, anyone that would stand against his authority. The entire Eastern church, millions of people were killed by the Pope. And so we inherited this, and this is just one of the things that Luther did not tackle in his day and time. But when you've got one man who is exalting Constantine to the position of Almighty God upon the earth, the Christ incarnate upon his throne in Rome, and how he does it is to have a three and a half year ministry. That's where it came from. After that point, that that is when we find text where they started tampering with in uh, adding in a little tidbit into the Gospel of John, uh, which uh, which I'll share in, in just a little bit. Okay, I got you a question. Now, you know all of us are prophecy students, and I know that you've heard a lot of comments from people that are prophecy students. What are they saying about how this book helps them to understand Bible prophecy, the events that we're currently experiencing, where we're going? Sam, the, um, th this one thing uh, had to be solved, and um, as far as the chronology of the gospel record, in order to do this right, we have to understand the biblical reckoning of time. That's how Yeshua could be three days and three nights in the grave, and yet raised on the third day. Because of biblical reckoning of time, the day begins at sunset, at night. So then you can have three days and three nights and still be raised on the third day. That's, that's the first thing. It's very simple. Uh, second thing, we're all raised with a pagan calendar. Every day of the week is named after a different pagan god. Every month of the year, basically, is named after a different pagan god, except for the months that are still named in English after the ancient biblical months, like December. December is the 12th month, isn't it, Stan, on the pagan calendar? Right. But December, Deca, means 10th. Why? Because it's the uh, it followed along the time of the tenth biblical month. Uh, July and August, the only ones named after men who became gods, Julius Caesar and Caesar Augustus. But, uh, you know, the rest of them, Janus, the two-headed god who looks back at the past and forward at the future, is basically a pagan calendar, a pagan reckoning of time. So we had to do, what we had to do in order to put the gospel record in order was then go back to the ancient biblical reckoning of time. And most people think that that's the Julian, uh, the, uh, the Jewish calendar. But no, the modern Jewish calendar was invented in 359 of the Common Era, right down below my house in Tiberius, Israel. That the last act of the Sanhedrin before disbanding and going into exile was to create a mathematical logarithm, a calendar based on mathematical calculations rather than on the actual visible sighting of the new moon and the V barley in the land of Israel. That was the Sanhedrin's job to determine the beginning of the year when the barley is of Eve and when the new moon is sighted, they were the one who sanctified it, the trumpets were blown, and that is how it was done for hundreds and hundreds of years. Yea, over a thousand years, that's how it was done until 359. And so all chronology, anyone that's tried to put together the chronology of the Gospels, the, the, the most astute have taken the Jewish calendar and rolled it back in time. Wrong answer. Because in 358 of the Common Era, that calendar that they invented in 359 was not even valid. It took them 400 years to finally put together that calendar and to make the whole system uh, that, that they put in place. But this is what happened, Stan, and this is the, the, the earmark. When I began working on this well over 40 years ago and laying out the timeline on this, because every single detail has to be put on this mathematical timeline, we were simply putting the, the biblical month 
is 29 days, 30, 29 days, 30 days, 29 and 30, alternating and admit we were simply guessing. That's all we could do. But what happened is Neil Armstrong put a prismatic mirror on the moon. There are now five of them on the moon. For 10 years, NASA shined laser beams off from these prismatic mirrors so that they could track the lunation period. After 10 years running them through the Cray supercomputer, now we have that logarithm to where uh, on a laptop, I, and this is what we do, we plot a one square meter in the middle of Jaffa Gate. And five minutes after sunset, I can tell you how much of the moon was illuminated at any moment in time in history. From that, that perspective, wow. that allows us to find the sighting of the first sliver of the new moon. If we can find that, then we can count 14 days. This is when the Passover lamb was sacrificed that day. At sunset, that begins the Feast of Unleavened Bread. All of the feasts now can be nailed down to exactly when they happen, the gospel record. And it could never be done until mirrors were put on the moon. This is a treasure for this generation. Now, I want to tell you, Stan, because what I want to make available uh, to your listeners out there through the Prophecy Club, and, and they are going to get a price on this that they will never see on our website. And this is my my thanks to you for your stand uh, to support the Prophecy Club. And Stan, I, I want to stop right now. I want to I want to encourage everyone to support your ministry. This is a ministry. Take a part of your tithe, take your whole tithe, and, and you need to support this ministry, which continues after decades to get the gospel of the kingdom uh, out to the, the entire world. And the reason why you are here, Stan, and the reason I'm here is because people in the past have stood with us so that we can still get the gospel of the kingdom out there, but it's a responsibility of the people that are hearing and, and watching now to take up that and to take on the burden on, on their shoulders. I know some of the things that you've gone through, Stan. I know some of the trials and the troubles and, and financial difficulties it, it takes because you put it out there, you keep putting it out there, and then when things dry up, you're already hanging out there. You're all, the, the money is already spent. The, the, the commitments are already made. And it's like, okay, now we got to reel it back in. And it takes a long time to make sure that you've got more than just beans and rice on, on the table at that point. Amen. So Amen. I'm telling people, I'm we are putting this out to you, Stan, and uh, we're, we're putting a price on it, which they will never, ever find on our website. They can't get it. So don't even go to my website. Go to Stan and get it. Because this is the chart that took me over 40 years. Now, Stan, I'm holding this up so you can see it on Skype. Right, Unfortunately, right. people out there can't see it, but this took over 40 years of my life to be able to do. This is a chart that, first of all, the bottom line is a jeweling calendar put in place 42 years before Yeshua was born. The top line on this is the days of the week. That on the Julian calendar is accurate to better than one ten millionth of a day because the Julian calendar is still the time clock of astrophysics today. They don't use the, the Gregorian calendar. It's a decimal point time clock, and that's what they use to launch spacecraft uh, into space. Okay. And then what is the next lineup? It is the first sliver of the new moon. It is the biblical calendar in during Yeshua's ministry. And we chart this from the day Yeshua is baptized with, in water until the day he baptizes with the Holy Spirit. Now, Stan, this is where it gets wild. It could never be known in any other generation. I, you know, and I spent my life in Bible prophecy too. This shocked me. It stunned me when I saw it. And I will tell you how I got this chart in just a minute, where, where it came about. But from that moment, when he is baptized in water to the day he baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And remember, it was John. Uh, in the Gospel of John, it says, uh, John the Baptist, uh, excuse me, it says that Yeshua did not baptize, only his disciples did. Why? Because John the Baptist said, I indeed baptize with you with water under repentance, but the one coming after me, he will baptize with the Holy Spirit with fire. Right. Yeshua yes. himself didn't baptize anyone. His disciples had that job as we still have that job. 
We can't fill anyone with the Holy Spirit, but Yeshua still does his job. He is alive and he does it. Amen. And Amen. so and so now let, let's look at this. This is what I discovered, and this is what people will see with this chart when they get this, Dan. And again, th this should be this should be right here a thousand dollars for what it costs a lifetime to be able to do. The day Yeshua was baptized until he baptized with the Holy Spirit, 70 weeks. Now, let's look at Daniel's prophecy. I'm just going to give a quick overview. It speaks of the angel Gabriel comes to him and let, let, and he, let, let me jump in here for just a minute and describe what this chart is is looking like, okay? It's okay. four foot wide. It's about 18 inches tall. And, That's right. And it is and, full color. And it, this is the kind of thing that you would either roll out on a table for a quick look. This is something you might even with thumbtacks or something like that uh, put up on the wall. I'm, I'm going to guess probably some people have had it framed, but... You can sit there and look and understand in a quick way that Jesus's ministry was not three and a half years long, but it's actually 70 weeks long. And that fits to be the acceptable. The acceptable year of the Lord. That's what the chart is called. Right. But, but Stan, really, when it comes down to it, the 70 weeks is not the biggest deal about this chart. You know, it, it, the, the biggest deal is every incident in Yeshua's life and ministry is detailed according to the number of the incident found in the chronological gospels. We see exactly where he was, which gospel author records these events because they record the events. Uh, sometimes all four gospel authors do the same event. Sometimes it's just one, sometimes just two, sometimes three. And there is not a single week missing. We know exactly where Yeshua is during his entire ministry and it all makes sense. And when you see this, you will be amazed because you will see the entire gospel record unfold before your eyes like a movie playing. This is absolutely incredible. It took years of doing this and even adding some of the notations that took me two and a half months this last year with the graphic artist. This is nothing like this has ever been done in the history of the human race. I guarantee it. And no one's ever seen anything like this. Now, let's... Uh, let, let's before let's, you go let's too go. far here, if you want to get chronological gospels and on his website at sixty eight ninety five, he's made a special offer through Prophecy Club only. So you got to call us to get this offer, a gift of $65 for this chronological gospel, uh, a gift of $65, and that not a permanent thing. I don't know how long that's going to last, but I wouldn't wait around if I were you. And then if you want the four-foot chronological gospel chart he's been talking about, uh, there's another special price, gift of just $16, but you got to call us. 785-266-1112. 785-266-1112. Takes us a few days to get this on the website, but for right now, I'd call us. 785-266-1112. Chronological Gospels, gift of 65. Uh, the chart for a gift of $16 plus whatever the shipping is. 785-266-1112. Michael Root. Hey, uh, Stan, you, you're right. This isn't going to be forever because if the, the whole world finds out that they can get it from you cheaper than they can get it from me, I'll go bankrupt. Okay, <laughs> so uh, we don't we don't want that happening. Uh, so, uh, but but this is uh, this is my special thanks to you, Stan, to the Prophecy Club, and uh, I'm encouraging people that are being ministered to by you, minister back to you so that you can continue doing what you're doing. See, Stan, in your, all your time, I've never heard you say, we're going to raise money, we're going to raise this much money, we need this much so that we can get the gospel of the kingdom out to the world. You, you've actually gotten the gospel of the kingdom out, and you've said, I need people to help me. You are going to do it, whether anyone's there to help you or not. That is, that's the kind of man that is, uh, is being broadcast out to you, ladies and gentlemen. You know, I've been around, I've been around for years. I know that the, the ups and downs, I know what he's put on the line. I know the pressure that he's had to endure. When you see a quarter million dollars a month going out just to pay airtime, just to get out to the world, and and you've got to strain at everything and worry about, you know, what whether you got gas in the car or not, because you got bills to pay to get this word out. Ladies and gentlemen, 
This is a place to tithe. You, you're not padding pews. You're not paving parking lots. This is not sloppy, agape, greasy grace here, people. This is the truth, and Dan, Stan is putting this out here. So Stan with Stan, or just turn the radio off, okay? Go listen to some toothy grinned uh, preacher who's going to tell you that you're going to drive a Rolls Royce next week if you send all your grandmother's money to him. Okay, this is not what this is all about. This is not the whoredom of the Christian, oh, you know, televangelism. All right, and that's why I'm on Stan Show because this is what he wants to get out to the world. Thanks I, for letting me blab there, Stan. I'm just, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just on fire. People need to give to you. Well, I appreciate that so much. Um, you said that it took you 40 years to complete the research. Why did it take so long? The end product was Stan, is that I have solved every apparent contradiction in the English text of the gospel record. That is what had to be done in order for this to fit. There have been questions that I've had, some for 20 years, some for more than 30 years. And there are questions that have been answered since you have received your manuscript version. What happened at that point, when I did the manuscript version, and I just did a small number of these, and these were, we put those out, and they were available at $1,000 a piece. And, and that is how I was able to afford to be able to begin the publishing on the, the Bible version that people are getting out there. Finally, I have the Gospels in chronological order, and I began feverishly reading this book. I read it over and over and over. And I told people beforehand, there are things that Yeshua says, I just don't understand. I know what these words are. I know what the Greek is. I know what it says in English, but I still don't understand it. But then when I read it in context, oh, that's what it is. Right. See, you can't get it by one verse. It's like, you know, what's been going on for the last two weeks? Why is he saying it to these particular people at this particular moment? It's because of what happened two weeks before. It all adds up and it's like explosions happening. And so now I can notate it. Now I can make the proper translation in the chronological gospels because it takes context to understand these things. So you're saying that you've got a newer version over mine, and you're saying you have new revelations that oh, yeah. are going to help people understand the New Testament in ways bigger and further and deeper than they've ever gone before. Absolutely. Absolutely, Stan. That's why That's why ministers can, can read it and say, I've learned more about the Bible than I've ever known in my life just reading the introduction. Okay, brothers and sisters, if you'd like to have Chronological Gospels, it's available right now for a gift of $65. If you'd like to have the four-foot chart, gift of $16. 785-266-1112. Probably hadn't got it on the website yet. 785-266-1112. 785-266-1112. I didn't have to say it that many times because you already got it in speed dial. The speed dial on your smartphone. But for those that don't. 785-266-1112. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your prayers. And thank you for your gifts of support. God bless. Now from the Prophecy Club, some exciting opportunities for you. As you know, Redwood Gold is now sponsoring the Prophecy Club. That means that they help us to continue to be able to come to you. So, of course, we want to help them. In an effort to get you to introduce yourself to them, they're offering a one gram silver bar free and postage paid just for giving them a call. They just want to get to know you. Now, it's a limited time offer. It works like this. You call Redwood Gold, tell them you listen to the Prophecy Club, chat with them a moment. They send you a one gram silver bar free and postage paid. Redwood Gold, 844-800-6677. Pretty good deal, huh? Just for an introduction. Redwood Gold, 844-800-6677. No obligation. Tell them you listen to the Prophecy Club. Redwood Gold, 844-800-6677. You got nothing to lose. Call today. Lindsey Williams has just come out with what I think is probably his best and most important DVD. It's called Trump Speaks to the Elite. Why did Henry Kissinger go to the Trump Tower to meet with Donald Trump? Elite. Total devastation. How to take advantage of the elite. 785-266-1112 or